Calaroga Shark Media. Hey there, TV lovers. This is Journey Joe Mitchell, coming at you from the cozy confines of the TV basement. Today, we're diving into a classic sitcom that defined 1970s television comedy, The Bob Newhart Show. So grab your favorite cardigan, settle into your therapist's chair, and let's dive in. The Bob Newhart Show aired on CBS from 1972 to 1978, running for six seasons and 142 episodes. The show starred comedian Bob Newhart as Dr. Robert Hartley, a Chicago psychologist dealing with his quirky patients, friends, and family. What set this show apart was Newhart's deadpan delivery and the focus on adult relationships rather than family dynamics. The series was created by David Davis and Lorenzo Music, who wanted to showcase Newhart's unique comedic style. They built the show around his persona as a mild-mannered, slightly befuddled everyman trying to make sense of the world around him. Let's talk about the fantastic ensemble cast that brought this show to life. Bob Newhart as Dr. Robert Hartley, our main man, the psychologist with the famous stammer and deadpan reactions. Suzanne Plachette as Emily Hartley, Bob's witty, sarcastic wife who often served as the perfect foil to his straight man routine. Bill Daly as Howard Borden, the Hartley's neighbor, a divorced navigator who often popped in with zany stories and misunderstandings. Peter Boners as Dr. Jerry Robinson, Bob's orthodontist friend and office neighbor, known for his playboy lifestyle. Marsha Wallace as Carol Kester, the snarky receptionist who kept the office running with her quick wit. The show also featured a rotating cast of patients, including Jack Riley as the neurotic Elliot Carlin and Florida Freebus as the sweet but forgetful Mrs. Bakerman. The Bob Newhart Show had many standout episodes. Over the River and Through the Woods, Season 3, Episode 10. This Thanksgiving episode features Bob and his friends getting drunk while watching football. It's a hilarious look at male bonding and holiday traditions. Mugu Gai Pan, Season 4, Episode 12. Emily goes out of town, leaving Bob to fend for himself. His attempts at cooking Chinese food lead to hilarious results. Death Be My Destiny, Season 5, Episode 12. Bob becomes obsessed with his own mortality after a patient dies. It's a perfect blend of the show's ability to tackle serious topics with humor. Birth of a Salesman, Season 6, Episode 13. Bob tries his hand at real estate, leading to some classic Newhart physical comedy. While The Bob Newhart Show was consistently praised by critics, it didn't rack up as many awards as you might expect. The show was nominated for two Emmys for Outstanding Comedy Series in 1977 and 1978. Newhart himself was nominated for Golden Globes for Best TV Actor, Musical Comedy in 1975 and 1976. The lack of major awards doesn't diminish the show's impact, though. It was consistently ranked in the top 20 during its run and has only grown in esteem over the years. The Bob Newhart show wasn't really known for stirring up controversy. In fact, one of its strengths was how it tackled potentially sensitive subjects with grace and humor. However, there were a couple of aspects that raised eyebrows. The show's portrayal of therapy was sometimes criticized for being unrealistic or making light of mental health issues. However, many in the psychology field actually praised the show for bringing therapy into the mainstream and depicting it in a positive light. The decision to have Bob and Emily remain childless throughout the series was unconventional for the time. Newhart insisted on this, wanting to avoid the typical family sitcom tropes. The impact of the Bob Newhart show on pop culture can't be overstated. Here are just a few ways it's left its mark. The finale of Newhart, Bob's next sitcom, famously referenced the Bob Newhart show in one of the most memorable series finales of all time. The show has been referenced and parodied in numerous other TV shows and films, from The Simpsons to Family Guy, and it helped establish the workplace family sitcom format that would become popular in later shows like Cheers and The Office. So there you have it, folks. The Bob Newhart Show in a nutshell. It's a show that proved you don't need loud gags or outrageous plots to be funny. Sometimes all you need is a slightly befuddled psychologist, a great ensemble cast, and the perfect deadpan reaction. Until next time, keep those laugh tracks ready and your psychologist on speed dial. This is Journey Joe Mitchell signing off.